you want to start editing video but don't want to break the bank doing it? Well, I'm here to help. My name's Comfy and I've been a professional video editor since the caveman days. I used a stone computer. I got a lot of comments on my last video asking me to cover how to get started editing using DaVinci Resolve. Only problem was I'd never used it before. Well, that all changes today. I sat down and got myself familiar with it and now I'm here to tell you two things. Number one, this program's pretty good. It has loads of features and functionality so you don't find in a lot of other programs. And number two, this program is free. The cost barrier for a program like Premiere can be prohibitive for a lot of people. But with this free software and my help, there's never been a better time to be a creator. So let's not waste any time. All right, so when you first open it up, it's going to show you all of the projects you have ongoing. We're going to make a new project. We're going to just name this Test Project 3. I've made a bunch of, <laughs> I've been tooling around with it a little bit. And then it'll open up something that may or may not look sort of familiar to you. We have our media area over here, our timeline viewer over here, and our timeline at the bottom. So I went ahead and recorded a little bit of gameplay so that we have something to work with on this video. So when you click and drag your first video clip inside, it's going to ask you, do you want to change the project frame rate? So I'm used to Adobe Premiere where the timelines themselves have all these settings, but it seems like DaVinci has sort of a project frame rate. We're going to just go ahead and say yes. Or from what I understand, you're able to change this later, so it's not a big deal. So we have our gameplay clip and then also our VTuber clip here. I've dragged those both in now. I'm going to click and drag them both in here one on top of the other so to make this a little easier to look at i'm gonna go ahead and disable this top view for now by clicking that guy right here but we'll come back to that later so like premiere resolve seems to have a lot of different workspaces so what we've defaulted into is the cut area and i think that this is supposed to mainly be for assembly rather than the nitty gritty so we have the timeline as you sort of might recognize it down here at the bottom but additionally it looks like this guy on the top represents the entire timeline at all times so if you're working in this screen you don't have to sort of zoom in and out to get to the end. You can kind of just click around and watch it from here. This is nice to have, but I feel like for me, I'm I'm more used to the edit area. So let's check out that. So this is a little more like what I'm used to. We got a lot of different things to look at here. So first and foremost, we still have our viewer in the middle there. We can see all the different tracks now. We got video on top of audio. We have our media area over here. We see the two clips here and then our timeline right here. Can I rename this? How do I rename this? Oh, you just click on the, okay, you click on there. Test timeline. Below here is where all the different effects live. And then over here is our effects control, which seems to just be always on top, which I do appreciate quite a bit. So for example, if I click on this clip in the timeline, I have options to affect the video and the audio. Additionally, by default, the audio and video of a clip are linked together. So if I move the top here, they both go together, but you can right click and then uncheck link clips. You can also control alt L it looks like on the keyboard. Look on that. So now if I deselect and then click here, they are no longer linked. So what that means is that A, I can delete this. Oh. No, I can't. A few moments later. Uh, okay, so the regular delete button above your D-pad will delete everything in the in the timeline? I don't know why that's how that works. If you hit backspace, it'll just get rid of it like it should. Um, that's kind of wild. As I was gonna say, these two clips are just duplicates of each other, so I'm gonna get rid of that. We don't need it! So we're gonna go through the whole process of, like, making a short video for yourself. So it looks like we have mainly these four tools to work with. We have the selection tool, or arrow, uh, trim dynamic trim and blade. This is the cut tool. So the arrow tool is kind of what we've been using. You just click on things. You can click and drag on them, move them around, interact with different things. Just kind of your selector tool. Skipping over to the blade tool now. Now we can cut stuff. If your clips are linked, it'll cut both the video and the audio. And then if we go back to the arrow tool, we can move this away, for example. Did that blow your mind? It would blow my mind if you'd hit that like button for me. It's free and it really helps me out. Thank you. All right, I've just learned something. The backspace key and the delete key work differently. Let's say, for example, that I don't want any of the menu. We're going to just start right as it opens. I'm going to use my blade tool. We're going to cut right there. And now I want to delete all of this, right? So if I switch back to my arrow key, I click on here and I hit the backspace. That'll just get rid of it, and then I'll have all this space here. And this is sort of by default how Premiere works, so it doesn't it doesn't move clips around for you unless you ask it to. But if I undo that, I'm going to click on this and hit the delete key. It will delete everything up to that point and put it, uh, I guess, up to the next clip. And just to further explain, let me add a cut here, say, and then I'll select the arrow tool. We will hit delete. And you can see that it like clears up a ton of space in between here on all the different things it can. So I guess use that at your own 
discretion. Um, we're going to just be using the backspace key and manually doing things. I'm sure that's something you can get used to, but for our purposes, I'm just going to keep it simple. But in any case, we're going to blade tool here and here, and we'll just delete everything. All right, and then last but most interestingly different from Premiere is the trim edit mode. Now this tool does a lot of things all in one that Premiere separates out in a bunch of different ways. And they've set it all up so it does work pretty nice once you kind of get into it. This tool does a number of things. If you hover it over the edge of a clip, you can extend it or reduce it. If you look real close, you can also see that both edges are kind of tinted green as I'm doing this. This just means that there is more in either direction that it can be extended. You also see that this little box shows up and that will show you the whole edge of the clip. Once I bring it all the way to the end, you'll see that it changes to red, which means I cannot extend any further. Similarly, since this is the end of the clip, if I try and drag this here, you'll see that it's red. I can pull it this way for sure but uh, I can't pull it out any farther that way. And if you do this when it's next to another clip, it will overwrite that clip um, in whatever direction you're pulling it in. The cool thing though, is that it doesn't just do that. It does a lot more. So this tool cares about where you are hovering when you sort of make your selection. So you can see that the icon is changing shape whenever we kind of move it in different spots. So if you're hovering over the main body of it, the visible video part, and you click and drag, this is the slip tool. So without moving where the clip is on the timeline, you can move the inside. So we can see on the bottom two quadrants up there, those are the original spots that it starts and it ends, those two frames. But if I click and drag, we can now see like, oh, maybe I want this clip to start um, there and end right before the game over comes up. So I can just let it go. It has changed the inside without moving anything here on the timeline, right? So that's if you hover over this part. If you hover over the color, the blue or where the text is, this icon changes. And now we are looking at the slide tool. So if I click and drag here, it'll move the clip itself without changing what's inside of it and overriding anything that it lands on. You could also do a similar thing with the arrow tool. And then last but not least, it looks like this is like a push tool. So if I click and drag when it's going here, it'll extend the clip out and push everything in front of it forward. So this is a good thing to use if you're not looking to overwrite the clip in front of you. And then conversely, if you sort of push away from a clip, it'll extend it out while pushing everything else in front of it. Also, just as a note, you may have noticed I skipped over the dynamic trim mode tool. This is a little more advanced. It doesn't have like a ton of use unless you are specifically using the keyboard to edit more than your mouse. So we're just gonna ignore it for now. I'm sure it's useful, but I, you know, that's not what we're doing here. All these things will probably take a little bit of getting used to, but once you get in the swing of it, I think it'll really help you edit very quickly. So we're just gonna delete all those clips. So now we're gonna take another look. Let's see about maybe cutting out some of the dead air in between here. So if we hit play here, it's kind of like my little guy. Shovel Knight's going on an adventure. So let's say we want to get rid of the level select here. So we find the spot where it's pure black. We'll grab our cut tool, cut there, cut here, drag this over, find the spot right before it opens up, cut, cut. And then to close the gaps, we'll hit the delete button. And then when we play it back, Bada boom. So now I'm going to show you all the transform window because this is going to be very important and kind of really adding some pizzazz to a lot of your videos. All right, I've clicked and dragged this Shovel Knight PNG in here. So we're going to fool around with this. Everything I'm about to show you, you can do for video as well. Um, but I'm we're, just to make it easy, I'm going to show you as an image. So we have this section that we just cut out, right? So what if we wanted to insert this picture in there instead? So there's a few ways we could go about doing this. If you wanted to, you could drag this out you know, take this picture, put it in here, and then, you know, grab all this and pull it back. But if we undo all that, Resolve has a few different options we can use instead. So we have these three guys here. We have the insert clip, overwrite clip, and replace clip. So I have this guy selected here. And so if I just hit the insert clip button, it'll just put it here and it'll push everything over to the side. Bada bing, bada boom. If I hit the overwrite clip, it'll put it in video one because I, I think I have specifically that one selected. If I were to try it again, yeah, it would, since I now have this video two selected, it'll overwrite it on top here. We're going to undo both of those. And then it looks like last but not least, if I wanted to replace clip, it'll replace the whole clip with this image based on which track I am selected on. So we'll undo all that. We will just place it in there. 
nice and easy. And now we have this picture here. So with this, let's go over all of the different transform tools. So from the top, we have zoom. You can click and drag any of these. Um, or if I type in, I could type in like 20 and it'll get like really, really big. That's pretty big though. We'll undo that. We also have the link button. So any of these two little linked chains will link the X axis and the Y axis. So if I unclick this and I zoom out the X axis, I'll make a big ball. And similarly, I can make him very tall. But we are going to link those back up. Position, similar thing. You can click and drag. And he'll move all around. You can go up and down. Boom, 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 boom. We have rotation angle. So this is just on a pure, you know, one-to-one. -one. You can only go all the way to the left or all the way to the right in one full rotation. The anchor point matters for a few things, but mainly for the rotation angle. So if we kind of move where the anchor point is, if we just sort of like guess. And now if we rotate, you'll see that it's rotating on this sort of hinge that the anchor point creates. So now if we like really crank this up, we can see that it's like... The anchor point's like all the way over here somewhere, so it's rotating the image around it. We can also click these guys to undo anything. We have the pitch. This is a pretty cool one. So this guy will, whoa, just sort of warp it in this up-down fashion. And then the yaw is the same thing, but left to right. And last but not least, it gives us these flip options. So flip like that and up and down. Just baked right in. Love it. You can turn on and off anything you've done. So if I do this and uncheck it, it'll just undo it. A lot of these are sort of defaulted to turn on. If you click on the area over here on the word, we get into the crop menu. So cropping is real easy. It just sort of crops in whatever direction you choose. You also have softness. This is the same as feather edge if you're familiar. So you can kind of like create a gradient instead of a hard edge. The composite, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you have all these different composite options. This is basically if something's underneath it. So for now, we'll drag this right here and then we can kind of see like uh, color burn, all these different things. They will change how the image looks. If you're trying to do specific stuff, sometimes you can get rid of the black by using uh, the screen filter, things like that. And then there's a few more different things under here. I think they are a little bit more advanced, so we don't need to really go over them right now, I think. But they are there. There's some more things to do. And before we leave this area, I really do want to talk about keyframes. Keyframes are your best friend. Let the keyframes move in. Marry the keyframes. You won't regret it, I promise. All right, so the way that you visualize keyframes in Resolve is a little different than in Premiere. So let's just start off with a nice, easy zoom. These little diamonds are your keyframes. So we're going to create a keyframe by clicking on this button. And then we're going to zoom off over here. At this point, we're going to sort of zoom out a little bit. And that will, once we make any change to this value, it's going to create another keyframe. You can also see that it automatically will give you these little arrows. So you can jump from keyframe to keyframe. And now if I go to the first keyframe and hit play, you can see it slowly zooms. It goes from one keyframe to the other, and that is the whole point of keyframes. So then if we go, we're past the second one a little bit. So if we go back, it'll zoom out and then woo, back in. So that's essentially how keyframes work. It'll take the values you set and figure out all the space in between and gradually move into it. And you can do this with any of these. So if I want to say, we'll move this guy over, we'll create a keyframe, jump over to this direction, and move it over here if we go back now we press play whoa and it's doing the zoom keyframes also so they can all work in tandem with one another and you might be thinking to yourself this looks a little complicated like how am i going to remember where they all are once you create a keyframe it makes these little icons appear you have a keyframe and uh whatever this is so you can double click on it and it will then show you all the different things you have going on so it's a little hard to see, but if you click on the different lines, we have the zoom Y and we have the position X. And just to, let's just be crazy. Let's add a pitch now. So I will create a pitch keyframe at the very beginning. And you can see that it creates this new line. There's no second value yet. So we're just going to go all the way to the end and we will shift it in one direction. So now if we go back, we can see now we have this whole third thing that we're doing. So from this menu, you can change these values. So if I click and drag this, this might be a little less precise, but you can kind of like really see in real time like, OK, well, this is what is happening here. You can zoom in if you want to get real, real, real precise. So you can put your playhead in one spot. And now you can see like, oh, we're 
we're herking and jerking one frame a second, so you can kind of make sure it's in the spot that you want it to. You can also use these guys to change the speed of your keyframes, how they ramp in and out of one another. So this is a pretty fast one. It's not like crazy fast, but you can see it retains the exact same speed from start to finish. Okay, so it looks like you click on a single point and then it'll give you this handle. So let's, uh, let's drag this back a little bit. So now we can see that it's like, so now if I play it, you can see that it's got like, it's a real slow start and you can kind of really play around with these. So just a real fast start into a slow move in fast at both beginning and end, but it's going to be slow in the middle. And that's how keyframes work in Resolve. So now if we click on a clip with audio, it lets us do the audio thing. So we have things like volume. This zero represents like how much you've adjusted it. At zero, this is what the waveform looks like, but you can kind of see like, oh my God. And that's going to be real bad to listen to. I'm not going to put you through that. The pan, it also starts at zero, but this is like if you want to get into the real nitty gritty of if your audio is coming out of the left or right speaker. Um, by default, it's right in the middle and typically you're not gonna wanna mess with this. But if you're doing something like specific, you could do that. Then we have pitch if you want to pitch shift. So right now, sounds kind of normal if we change the semitones and the sense in any one direction. Sounds a lot different. We can make it kind of higher or lower. And there you have it. Equalizer, I'm not really a sound guy in, in this regard, but if you know what you're doing with the equalizer stuff, it looks like it gives you options to do that. So now that we've done all this, we're gonna kind of circle back to our green screen version of me here, right? So over here is what they're calling the toolbox. We have all sorts of different effects and generators. If you wanted to make a title, let me just talk about that real quick. You would just like click and drag this guy onto a new layer or wherever you want it. And then if you double click on this, the video section now changes to how you'd want to adjust this. So you could type in, hi, I'm comfy cap. Boy, hey yo. And then you have all these different options, like you can change the font. Let's uh we'll change it to like pirate. That's that's nice and easy to read, right? Um, you can change like the color. Oh, this looks like an MS paint. Ooh, look at this. That's fun. Let's make it pink, sure. So you can adjust things like the size and the tracking, and then the line spacing up and down, font style, font case, you can make it all caps, alignment, all the, all this good stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, so you can add a stroke, so we're gonna add a black stroke around it. Let's actually change this back to white. That looks magnificently terrible. I hate what I'm looking at. Let's fix it. Oh my God. There we go. You do things like a drop shadow. If you want to offset it, that will kind of create the drop shadow. It looks like it's underneath by default. And then background, if you really want to make sure it's readable. So by default, it's turned off. So you have uh, the height at zero, but you can kind of adjust this. And if you wanted to really have like a nice little text box, you could do that. Um, you can add an outline to it. It looks like, yeah, corner radius. You can make it all the way square or by default, it has these rounded edges and changing the opacity, the color, all that good stuff. But we're gonna do any of that. <laughs> you can stretch this out just like we've shown before. We'll leave that there. What I came here for originally was the chroma key filter. So we're gonna find the 3D key here, click and drag over this. So what I learned pretty quickly is that I guess the way that DaVinci works is interesting in a way. So this is sort of how I would normally do this. So I would just like pick a color and then I would click on here. Ideally, my cursor would change. I'm on the pick and I click on the green and nothing happens. So why not? Do I add the plus? No, that's not working. I'm not 100% if this is across the board, but this says open FX. So whenever you start a new project or maybe whenever you log into it, you are just sort of default to no overlay. So to change that, we're gonna click over here. This little square thing, I think by default, it'll be this little icon. And now we have a bunch of different things. So if I click on transform, it opens up this transform menu. So if I wanted to on screen, move it this way instead of doing it the way I'd showing you before. You can do it that way. It looks like the same is true for um, the crop menu. And then last, but certainly not least, we have the open FX overlay. So if we click on this, now if we go over into effects, it will allow us to pick the green. So you need to be in this overlay to use uh, open FX things to interact with the screen in this way. We can also see we've got a pretty significant green glow around me. So let's see what we got. 
despill? Yeah, we can we can crank that up like a lot. That looks pretty good. I don't really feel like I need to mess with that too much. There are a lot of different other options if you want to get real specific, but I think that's fine for us. So now let's just very quickly, we'll move this guy over here as if I was like doing a stream. And now if we zoom all the way out, we've got a whole clip and it looks like I'm playing. I die right here. I just look so upset. Look at me. Oh, I died. <laughs> for all intents and purposes, we have a clip now. So the last step, as always, in any video editor is that we need to export this dang thing. So we're going to click into the deliver workspace. And then that brings up this menu. This is a lot less of an intimidating menu than some. You have a lot of different presets. Typically, I advise against using these presets since you can't really mess with them too much. They have a YouTube preset. I tested this out. The YouTube preset exported at sort of a lower quality bit rate than I would have preferred. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you kind of what I would do from scratch. So first things first, you just name it my cool video. You will choose the location. It looks like you're able to render single clips or individual clips. We're just going to leave it as a single clip. And then we have all the different options. So there are a million different ways you can export something, but this is going to be the case for 99% of use case. So I'm just going to teach you what you gotta do for YouTube. So you're gonna go in here, click on MP4, and then you have the codec H264 or H265. We're just gonna leave it at four for now. If you're editing a normal 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio video, it'll just be in this default. So you won't need to touch this. And then by default, it just has automatic quality best. Um, just leave it there. And then once you've done all this, you hit add to render queue and it'll pop up over here. I suppose that the point of this is if you're trying to do a lot of individual clips, you can render them all out at once, but we just have this one clip. So we're going to hit render all and then ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba, it will render this whole clip and voila. So now if we go to our export folder, you'll see these two things that I made earlier and we have my cool video. How cool is this video? I'm losing it. It's too cool. Nobody's ever seen a video this cool. Anyway, so now you are armed with all the information you need to get going with video editing and for free. And if this video's got you itching to create, I have another video over here where I go over the ins and outs of everything I wish I knew before making content.